This could be another big week for Tesla stock, and we're really coming off of last week that had good news. The good news was a dovish Fed Jerome Powell. Rate hikes, they're not coming anytime soon. The market started to price in only one cut in December. Now you're pricing in a cut in September, and I believe the markets are eventually going to price in a cut in July as well, about 13 weeks from now, I believe we will see the first cut. And I do think that puts the shorts in Tesla in a vulnerable position. I think that means some reallocation of capital. Now, that's not going to happen all at night, but they're all overnight. But there are some important catalysts you need to know for this week. And Tesla stock, let's be honest, is on the cusp of seeing a short squeeze. It's only a matter of time. Is this the week that Tesla stock does start to go through a bit of a short squeeze? We'll talk about it here in this video. But first, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you own Tesla stock. I want to see just how many of you guys own the stock. So unfortunately, before talking about only Tesla, we do need to go over the earnings and the upcoming economic data that will affect Tesla stock and our markets. With that said, I should also mention i will be going over a price prediction aka my expectation for this week in tesla first up let's start with the earnings calendar for this week now there's a lot of different companies that will be reporting earnings none of them are your large cap names your big tech earnings are over with until you get nvidia which is still a couple of weeks away but these companies can move their stocks in their sector and there's a lot of different sectors reporting earnings this week first off tomorrow pre-market you have spirit bioentech you have tyson biosyst and some other random names tomorrow in after hours you have palantir that one's gonna be a big one that can move obviously your software stocks and even potentially heavily shorted stocks more I don't want to say meme stocks, but more in that sector, think that sector, you have Lucid, which can directly affect EV makers and auto companies, Realty Income, Hims and Hers, Microchip, Axon, Teradata, and Cohort. Obviously, Microchip could be important for semiconductors heading into the end of this week when you get some AI earnings. Tuesday, pre-market, you have Walt Disney, Celsius, Datadog, Crocs, and Nikola, um, Ferrari, BP, um, the Geo Group, couple other smaller names as well. Disney could be a pretty important one during their path of recovery. They've started to kind of outline how they're going to recover. If that is continuing, well, Disney going up could be really good on earnings. Datadog, another one of your AI stocks deemed as an AI stock to some degree, so that one could also be important for the broader markets. Now, Tuesday and after hours, you have Rivian, Arista. Arista will be huge for the AI trade as well. Upstart, Win, Lift, Oxy, Twilio, Toast, and some other names. Wednesday pre-market, you have Uber, Shopify, Affirm, ACM Research, Avandel, Toyota, Emerson. That's actually my son's name, Emerson. And that's pretty much it. Wednesday and after hours, you are going to get ARM. ARM's going to be your biggest earnings of this week by far because they do a lot of their business with NVIDIA. After all, NVIDIA was trying to buy ARM. Now, ARM, I'm not confident in ARM earnings, okay? Why I'm not confident in ARM earnings is because the stock is super expensive. It is far higher than any kind of fair value that you can put on the stock. So even if the earnings are not bad, the stock is probably priced for something that is much better than what we're going to get. And 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 that's why I would be a little bit careful heading into ARM earnings. Now, if ARM were to outright do bad, well, the stock could plummet. Um, but my expectation is anywhere from five to 10% down for arm. The stock's going to price in at least that for earnings. So I don't know how much of an options trade for an example, there's going to be, but arm is, uh, probably not going to do great. I I'll, I'll be surprised if arm goes up after earnings. Then again, they have fallen a lot already, but that's just because they were egregiously expensive. Now it's just 
expensive. <laughs> Still, I think uh, not really priced accordingly to the business. You do have Robinhood, Airbnb, AMC, the Trade Desk, Beyond Me, App Love and Energy Transfer, Duolingo, and Exact Science that will also be reporting earnings. Airbnb could be another important one for. Uh, specifically, you know, real estate and travel stock. So think that sector. Thursday pre-market, you will have Roblox, Warner Bros. Discovery, GigaCloud Technology, Sundial, Plug, Kronos, um, Canadian Solar, and Cedar Fair. Thursday after hours, Marathon Digital, SoundHound, CleanSpark, Unity, uh, Vuzix, Caliber, Blink, and Indie. And then Friday pre-market, just bunch of random companies so quite a few different sectors that will be reporting earnings this week shopify i i guess i should have pointed that one out as well shopify can have an effect on big tech especially can have an effect on a company like amazon overall if there was one stock that will move the markets this week it is arm and i'm not confident in arms earnings but again arm has fallen quite a bit so maybe a a drop would be smaller for arm even if they come in with good or bad earnings i'm just not that confident in arm i mean the stock was just trading at a 1400 times pe multiple trading at five times the 2028 valuation of nvidia that's just not sustainable. And you've started to see that come down, but it's still trading at a much higher premium than something like NVIDIA. Now, as far as the economic data for this week, it's a lot of small bits of data, a bunch of Fed speakers, but some of this data can be important and move the market. So on Monday, you are going to get Fed Barkin that will speak um, right at about noon. Fed Williams that speaks at about 1 p.m. So following last week and Jerome Powell, the markets want to see, is the Fed really dovish or is Powell just dovish? But are Fed officials starting to see signs of better things, right? Are they starting to see signs of maybe they should start cutting or are they more on the fence? That kind of language will be important for stocks this upcoming week. So starting off tomorrow morning, you're going to get some Fed speakers. Now, you're also going to get a loan officer survey. This can be very important for judging the state of credit markets. If the loan officer survey, a very well-respected and well-followed survey, if that comes in bad and loan officers are not feeling great, yeah, that's going to be a problem. And um, maybe that might drop 10-year treasury yields and might um, increase the odds of rate cuts coming sooner. But we'll have to wait and see. So that is it for Monday. For Tuesday, you will get Fed Kashkari. This speaks at 1130 in the morning. A 52-day bond auction. That's that's a, that's a crazy one. A three-year bond auction and consumer credit change. Consumer credit change comes out at 3 p.m. The last, last month, we did have a big move based on this because we were expecting consumer credit to go up a lot, and it actually did not. So you did get a big move the last consumer credit change you had for the month of February. This one will be for the month of March, and you're expecting around $17 billion. So if it comes in lower, that means people were not spending as much money. If it comes in higher, well, that means people were spending more money. Used car prices month over month are expected to come out as well on Tuesday. We don't have an exact time on this, not sure exactly why, and we don't have an exact estimate or expectation not sure exactly why but this data will be important when it does come out on tuesday used car prices year over year will also come out last month used car prices year over year were negative 14.7 percent month over month used car prices were negative 0.4 percent so if that number comes in um anything like that that's probably going to be seen as good at least for inflation now wednesday you're going to get a lot of oil data and uh, mortgage data, mortgage applications um, for last week. But Fed Jefferson speaks at 11 o'clock in the morning, and you do have a 10-year bond auction at 1 p.m. These 10-year bond auctions um, tell you a lot about supply and demand in the treasury market. So if 
if there's a lot of buying of treasuries, that will send 10-year treasury yields lower, and that will be good for stocks. If there's not a lot of people that show up for the 10-year treasury auction, then yields will go higher, right? As it kind of works like a dividend stock. If everyone wants to own a dividend stock that you own, the yield is going to fall. Not for you because you bought it already, but for anyone else buying it, let's say the dividend stock doubles, the yield's going to fall by 50% as long as the dividend stays constant. If nobody wants to buy that dividend stock that you own and people are selling that dividend stock, well, the yield will go higher. So more demand for the 10-year treasury auction will cause 10-year treasury yields to fall. And sometimes you get quite a big reaction. Now, Last week, you had a big reaction in the treasury markets. Even on Friday, 10-year treasury yields fell under 4.5%, currently at 4.497%. So I guess if you're rounding, you would round up to 4.5%. But 10-year treasury yields were down about 7.5 basis points alone on Friday. So that 10-year treasury auction will be important. Now, you will have Fed Cook that speaks at 1.30 p.m. as well on Wednesday, and that's pretty much it. On Thursday, you will have the Bank of England interest rate decision. You're expecting them to not change rates at all. If they do cut rates, well, that could probably get our markets pretty excited, but We'll have to wait and see. Initial jobless claims will be coming out at 8.30 as well on Thursday in the morning at, um, you're expecting about 211,000. Initial jobless claims, you want to watch this because if we are going to see a labor market that continues to weaken and maybe unemployment continues to rise, at some point, the initial jobless claims numbers should start to spike. And then the markets will interpret a, you know, lower non-farms number and, well, more cuts from the Fed. So definitely want to be watching that. Um, you are going to get a bunch of ECB Fed speakers. I'm not sure if any of that's going to move our markets. But you will get a 30-year bond auction that comes out at 1 p.m. And same's true with the 10-year treasury and the 30-year treasury. Uh, depending how demand is for this, it can also affect the whole long end of the curve, the 10 and the 20-year treasury yields as well. Now, that's it for Thursday. On Friday, you are going to have your biggest data of this week, direct data. That is your Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey widely respected survey that's been going on since the 60, 60s. Um, and it comes out at 10 o'clock in the morning. Last month, the headline number came in at 77.2. The expectation is 78. So you're expecting the sentiment will get a little bit better in the survey. The headline number doesn't really matter too much. What you really want to watch for is the subcategory. So the five-year inflation expectations, last month that came in at 3%. Expectation is, again, 3%. Any rise there is going to be bad. A fall there is obviously good. Michigan consumer expectations last month came in at 76. Expectation is 77.3. And keep in mind, you want the economy to do well. You want people to feel optimistic and spend money. That's good for company earnings. That's good for the S&P 500 earnings. You don't want to see inflation expectations rise. And you don't want to see the consumer become less confident. In a perfect world here, you would want to see the economy doing well and inflation coming down. So any signs of inflation coming down, economy doing well, that is specifically good news for our markets. So current conditions will also come with this survey. Last month, you came in at 79. You're expecting 79.5. So higher likely the better there as well and then one year inflation expectations last month came in at 3.2 percent the expectation is 3.1 percent for this reading if you were to see again some big rise in one or five year inflation expectations that's what is going to likely dominate the markets um coming on friday so that will be very important as you can see it is highlighted in red and then you will get fed goals b that speaks at almost 1 p.m and um, he he's pretty important these days. The markets tend to pay attention um, to Goldsby. Fed Barr speaks at about 1.30 p.m. He really talks just banking policies won't be important at all. And then your inflation numbers will come out for China at 9.30 p.m. on Friday. Markets will be closed 
but that's definitely something to pay attention to. So there is definitely some data this week that can move the markets, but I think the biggest story will definitely be the earnings and specifically ARM earnings on Wednesday, in which I'm not that optimistic about, um, but <laughs> you've already seen quite the fall in ARM, so maybe it's not going to be a huge disaster as it otherwise would have been if ARM was still $140 per share. Now for Tesla stock this week, I do believe last week you had really good news and that was a dovish Fed Jerome Powell. You had a non-farm payrolls report that came in, uh, 60,000 jobs weaker than expected. You did also have your um, average hourly earnings that came in at 0.2% month over month. Expectation was 0.3%. All of this is positive. And I do believe there, there is going to be a longer digestion of all of this news, right? I don't think just Friday's market reaction, the NASDAQ up 2%, the Russell up about 1% was it, okay? And I will specifically point to the Russell here because you were only up 1% on Friday. And that news we got on Friday was specifically good news for small cap stocks. But there is still a lot of hesitation around going balls to the walls, if you will, into small cap stocks into interest rate sensitive names. You can see in after hours on Friday, IWM went up another 0.21%. Even the NASDAQ went up 0.16%. The Russell went up more in after hours than the NASDAQ. So I do think it, it, it takes some time, right? If we got that good data on Thursday and then Friday and even Wednesday from the Fed, big money does not move around their portfolio very quickly. And it does take time. So I am expecting a bullish continuation from last week. And I do think given the news that came out today for Tesla and Optimus and some of the other good news this weekend, I think there's more pressure than ever for shorts to start covering on short positions. I think it's only a matter of time before that happens, okay? You have multi-year highs sh for short interest at 3.85%, $19.21 billion currently in short positions with 106.72 million shares that are currently sold short. You have started to see some shorts covering on short positions as well. You've started to see a couple million shares covered for the past two days. That's a sign that maybe some even better news is coming for Tesla and, and, and maybe um, some of the shorts want to get out before that ultimately happens. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do get maybe really good news this week. Maybe FSD entering China or Tesla raising prices. Something along those lines would not catch me by surprise. I'm kind of seeing signs of something bigger coming. And even on Friday, with the Russell going up over 1%, including the move in after hours, with the NASDAQ going up 2%, all of that should have had a larger benefit to Tesla. But it didn't. Tesla was up a half of 1%, a little bit more than that, about 0.66%. It really didn't do as well as you would expect. And I think part of it is because you've seen a huge rally following Tesla's earnings. The best day in three years. And Tesla stock from the lows of about $138 to the high of $198 went up almost 44% in a very short amount of time. So you've seen some consolidation, some sideways trading action. That is expected before you get the next leg higher. You're still up about 31% from the lows of $138 where Tesla is today at $181 in a very short amount of time, okay? So this normally happens where you get a large up move, you get a little bit of consolidation, really just sideways trading action, and then you start to make your way higher. Now, on a purely technical basis, 188 is gonna be a level of resistance. I'm sure of it. If you get above that, 
your next stop's that 100-day moving average. If you get above that at 196, your 100-day moving average, then you can start to rally to that 200-day moving average around $220 per share. I think justifiably so, Tesla stock should be in the 200s right now, right? Of, of course, closer to the next generation vehicles. That good news that we got on the earnings call, it's getting pushed up ahead of time. Uh, ahead of scheduled closer to the robo taxi network than you have ever been before which is literally the reason why tesla was in the 400s at ultima highs 2025 looks a lot more optimistic for earnings comparisons and overall profitability should um, improve in 2025 especially as tesla started doing layoffs and really leaning down the business um, on top of rate cuts coming as soon as 13 weeks from now in July. That's my current expectation. These are all reasons I think Tesla stock should start to do well. Now, my expectation as well this week is 10-year Treasury yields are probably going to continue to fall with some dovish Fed speak, as well as some of those Treasury auctions. So with that, I do think that can give you room for Tesla stock to go higher. ARM earnings, that's the biggest wild card for this week, in my personal opinion. If we go ahead and, and pull up the chart of ARM, um, a lot of people are not going to realize this, but yeah, ARM has fallen quite a bit. Um, this week alone, ARM fell 31%. It's still trading at very high levels. Even when ARM IPO'd, it hit $69 and flopped, fell right back down to $46. It didn't do well following its IPO in September, of 2023 it's still trading at very high levels not as high as it once was and i think downside could be semi-limited down let's say to 80 dollars per share not a huge deal so i don't think either way unless arm were to miss or something that it's going to be a huge deal let's call it 22 percent down that's that's where i think arm um could go to to become a little bit more of I guess, a fair value proposition for investors. Do I think a collapse is coming in ARM? No, I think you've already seen a lot of that collapse. Do I think a huge rally is coming? No. Do I think a 5 to 10% fall after earnings is coming? Yes, that, can inf that could affect NVIDIA, just specifically NVIDIA and other AI stocks by themselves, or that could have a huge effect on the markets. I'm not sure. We've had a lot of other semiconductors that have already reported, like SMCI and AMD, and you've seen what happened. They already sold off. So maybe psychologically, markets are already getting ready for a miss from ARM, and, and even a miss or uh, the stock falling may not be seen as a huge negative. So I don't know. There's a lot of wild cards when it comes to ARM. But as long as Tesla can stay above 180, I think the stock goes higher this week. Now, if you go under 180 in the beginning of the week and then bounce around, I wouldn't definitively say that means the week is screwed for Tesla. My expectation is Tesla stock can make its way to that 100-day moving average. Now, this week, and that's around 196. Um, again, a lot of that is based on last week. And the good news that we got, that takes some time to get digested into markets and also the news that we got over this weekend with optimus and more range for the model y and many other things um so that's kind of my expectation personally now if we do fall i think good news is your downside's pr pretty limited here at around that 50-day moving average you, you you should find a lot of support around 174 if we do get good news as the options market has been kind of showing maybe we do the options market last week for tesla was 74 percent positive from big money some days were over 90 percent positive that's a good sign that maybe there's something bigger coming for tesla and if that's the case, then I think Tesla easily breaks into the 200s this week. But on a week-by-week -week basis, I don't know when the good news is going to come or when the big news is going to come. But I think it's only a matter of time before shorts start to cover on short positions. And even just not to mention shorts, retail, big money, they de-leveraged from Tesla 
They got out of Tesla stock following Tesla's last earnings, and I still don't think a lot of those guys have got back in. Let me know down below in the comment section if you sold Tesla stock waiting for a better entry before earnings and if you have gotten back in or not. But I still think there's a lot of people that want to get back into Tesla that are not in Tesla as much as they they were. And uh, this could be the week that some people get back in. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Again, my base case scenario is a test of this 100-day moving average. That's what I think is going to happen. A better case scenario is breaking out into the 200s, call it about 205. And I think a bad case scenario for this week is that 50-day moving average. A really bad case scenario, you would be testing that 20-day moving average at average at about $167 per share, although I don't think that's likely. And I think, if anything, you'll hold support at that 50-day moving average. So let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day. By the way, if you guys would like to come trade with us live in real time, check out that trading um, community. It is linked down below in the description of this video. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.